Hey, histamine intolerance. This is a big issue for a lot of people. I struggled with histamine intolerance for decades before I figured out what it was. And I don't remember how I figured it out. Actually, I talked about it in the book, Dirty Jeans, about how I struggled with it. And all those years I had bloody noses and itchy feet and irritability and difficulty falling asleep and very easily sweating, um, anxiousness, uh, headaches. I mean, you name it. Uh, it's all associated with histamine. So I'm going to give you a quick diagram of what histamine tolerance can do to your body in terms of symptoms. And I'm not going to talk really too much about the biochemistry. I will a little bit, but I get a lot of questions about which seeking health supplements are useful for supporting those who are struggling with histamine intolerance. So seeking health does have a suite of products that do support healthy histamine levels and they do different things and you need to be taking them at different times. So um, I'm going to make sure that I am live here and uh, yes, I am good. So I'm going to click this and make sure I can see your comments. I can. So I'm going to get to your comments um, slowly throughout this so I can stay on point. But I'm going to share my screen with you all and do comment below too if you like this format because if I just jump on Instagram, I'm going to be holding up pieces of paper and, and you know, it's not going to be very useful. This, I can actually show my screen and walk through things. So this here is from a, a really, really, really good paper. Um, the link is actually in the YouTube uh, description comment below, but this is the paper uh, written, I don't remember when, um, some time ago, but it's phenomenal. So it gives you a good basis of histamine intolerance and the functions of histamine. Look, histamine is not bad. You need histamine to do a lot of things. So, and uh, so here's histamine in the center. These H's, what you see, these are histamine receptors. So you have histamine and then histamine has to bind to a receptor in order to, for it to make that function. So you have histamine stored is a very important point. You have histamine stored inside your cells. Certain cells store histamine. Now, when those cells release histamine, that's when histamine can take action by binding onto that receptor. And then whatever that receptor is, depending on where it's located in the, in the body, will have a specific effect. So it can have an effect for causing acid reflux because too much histamine released in the stomach can lead to acid reflux and GERD, yes. Maybe you didn't know that. That's a big one. Too much histamine released in the gut can lead to diarrhea and irritable bowel syndrome. That's a problem. Too much histamine released in the uterus can lead to contractions and potentially miscarrying or preeclampsia. So histamine intolerance during pregnancy is not a good thing. In fact, a lot of conditions associated with hist uh, pregnancy complications are associated with higher levels of histamine. Too much histamine in the brain can lead to anxiety, irritability, headaches, migraines, um, possibly even seizures. I haven't looked at that. Um, but so these are all the, the things that it can be associated with. Not all the things, but this is a, a good uh, brief summary. Look at this, ladies, dysmenorrhea. So if you have painful menstrual cramps, yeah, that could be high histamine too. So, but also keep in mind that histamine can be elevated or higher for many reasons, and you can't just jump to a specific histamine supplement to address the cause, because what you're really doing is you're, you're palliating, i.e. supporting the pain or the problem of too much histamine, but it might not be the actual underlying problem. So I really do recommend this thing, right? So I really recommend getting a copy of this. I do have a whole chapter in here on DAO. Um, which is a one gene of histamine, um, but there are others. And I'm going to be showing you some genetic reports here in a second. So, but this is a, a good summary of what histamine does. I mean, you can see here, this is the good things that histamine does. It supports neurotransmitters. So you can sit here and focus and learn and listen. Um, it works on gastric acid secretion so you can digest your food. Um, smooth muscle constrict constriction so you can actually have um, you know contractions when you need to with your uterus. 
you need to have mucus secretion so you can you know the mucus is really really important for your immune system to move throughout your body and endothelial permeability for supporting uh, you know respiration of, of and supplying nutrients uh, heart rhythm vasodilation to deliver nutrients and so on so histamine is great okay now when it gets to histamine intolerance this is another uh, great paper and uh, this is the title of it here histamine histamine intoxication and intolerance so again it's it's a it's a degree right so histamine intolerance is basically defined as when the body is reached a point where it cannot metabolize or process the histamine fast enough okay so if you look at these diagrams these are three different people so you have person a person b or person c or it can actually be the same person at different times of day okay so let's let's do that let's let's not make it three different people let's make it one person let's make it you where you wake up in the morning and you're feeling great you feel fine you know, you, you have good energy, your mood is good, your focus is good, everything's great, okay? Now, you wake up and somebody told you, to, you know, it's a great way to start off your morning by drinking apple cider vinegar, and then you can have some sauerkraut and kombucha. It's a pretty funky breakfast, but, you know, it is the internet, and everybody's on social media, and everybody's learning from everybody, and hey, why not try it? So, you make yourself this amazing breakfast of apple cider vinegar diluted in water <clears throat> with a bit of kombucha and sauerkraut. And about 30 minutes later, or 20 minutes later, you're starting to get headaches. You feel flushed, warm, the tops of your ears are hot, you're starting to sweat, you're starting to get headachey, irritable, um, and your heart is going a bit faster, and you're a little anxious. What's going on? Well, look here. These little H's are histamine. So when you woke up, your little H's, the amount of histamine that you had in your system wasn't very much. And then you did the kombucha, you did the apple cider vinegar, and you did the sauerkraut. And now you've got all this histamine in your system. And your DAO enzyme, right here, your DAO enzyme is working hard on trying to process it, but it can't, there's too much, okay? So there's histamine intoxication. Now, histamine intoxication is this is this is like heavy duty stuff where you really um, it's not it could be even anaphylactic. So where you have a very strong uh, allergy response. So I, I don't know why they did histamine intoxication and histamine intolerance. Um, I would have reorganized this a bit more. Um, but anyway, so if you had histamine intoxication, that's when you get a huge amount of histamine and uh, when your genes cannot process it. And see, the DAO is trying to process it, the HNMT genes are trying to process it, um, but the histamine gets across the gut wall into the blood, and now you got histamine in your blood vessels, um, and now it delivers it to your brain and all the tissues in your body, and you're starting to get histamine-related symptoms, okay? Over here, when you're healthy, and you have a healthy histamine level, you have just a little bit of histamine in your blood, but your, your enzymes can also keep up with the amount, okay? Histamine intolerance is the same thing. So it's just, it's a degree in which, uh, how much can get through. Histamine intolerance, you're also gonna have a gut wall lining leaky. You're gonna have more permeability, uh, more bacteria in your gut that are causing problems, and you're gonna be absorbing more histamine um, because your DAO enzyme is problematic. Uh, it could be genetically, it could be epigenetically. Okay, so I'm going to now switch to some genetic uh, reports because um, if I show you the genetics um, that we've done on myself and my wife and a couple other people, um, I have another uh, report which I removed the name from, um, so you can't tell who that is. Um, and then I'm gonna be showing you a table of uh, histamine supplements. So I'm gonna actually show you that first so here are the histamine intolerance supplements at, available at Seeking Health, okay? And here's the product comparison chart. So these are the top most popular uh, supplements for supporting healthy histamine levels in folks such as yourself, okay? So we have Histamine Block, Histamine Block Plus, Histaminix, Probiotic Histaminix, 
and we have the powder of probiostaminics. So, and we also have some other ones as well. But primarily, what do you need to know about these four or five different products? Why would you use them? When would you use them? And so on. And if you gotta go, or if you wanna just reference this on your own time, in the description of this video, I've linked this for you already. So you can click that link below in the description anytime you want to learn about this. So Ceylon, she's one of the product specialists at Seeking Health and does a phenomenal job. And we actually have lots of other charts and tables for you as well. We have folate, magnesium, B12, glutathione, sleep comparisons, um, and so on. So you can see all 12 here. So we are going to be focused on histamine at the moment. So let's go back to this. And I'm going to be showing you my histamine pathway. And uh, so when you order your strategy and report from Seeking Health um, or your genetic test, uh, you give yourself a name. So I called myself Bad Dad. That's what uh, my youngest calls me sometimes. Dad, you're bad. Bad Dad. So this is my histamine pathway. And the genes that you're seeing here, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So give me one second make me smaller so that this is bigger okay and um yeah you guys can all read hear me yeah that's good i should have checked this earlier um but yes y'all can hear me um yeah dora is histamine you take histamine block but you want to know if histamine block plus is better uh they're different right which is why we have both um they're different so let me walk through this a little bit first okay so um, we're going to use you as an example, uh, Dorid. So you're using histamine block. So histamine block provides DAO, this uh, right here. So, right, so this gene right here is what processes histamine. And if you see here on strategy, it does it um, outside of cells, from food, from the drink, from the microbiome. Okay, so zoom in a little bit more here. So DAO, when you're taking histamine block, switch back to here so here's histamine block when you go to the supplement facts you can see here it provides DAO okay so DAO is what it provides patented enzyme enzyme formula DAO in your gut okay so let's go back and that's what it provides here so it's got 10,000 uh, HDUs right so we go back to the diagram. So when you take histamine block, you are literally swallowing what this enzyme makes for your body, which is pretty amazing. So if your enzyme is not functioning very well, if your DAO enzyme isn't functioning very well to make diamine oxidase, which will then turn histamine into uh, imidazole acetaldehyde, if you do not have that ability because your DAO enzyme isn't functioning, Histamine block can be amazing for you because now your body doesn't have to make it. And if you eat a histamine, you know, histamine, high histamine containing food or drink, or your microbiome is higher histamine, say from blastocystis hominis, the histamine block will assist your body in metabolizing that histamine towards a healthier level. And you basically take it when you are eating, when you are drinking. Okay. So that's when you take histamine block. You can also, important tip here, you can also test to see on an empty stomach um, without any food. Listen here, this is a tip that all even health professionals should be tuning into. If you are wondering if your digestive system has higher amounts of histamine producing bacteria in it or pathogens, and then, or if your gut is secreting higher levels of histamine and you're not sure maybe you got a leaky gut and you got quite a bit of uh, inflammatory processes going on in your gut and let's say you you don't know you could do lab testing for this it's kind of complicated you can do go to the doctors and all these things um, as you should but if you take one capsule of histamine block away from food by let's say a couple hours or maybe upon waking or before bed but at least a couple hours away on an empty stomach, you take one capsule of histamine block, you are going to be swallowing the DAO enzyme 
And if there is a lot of histamine that's being produced from these pathogenic bacteria, such as Blastocystis hominis, or Lactobacillus bulgaricus, or Lactobacillus fermentum, and you take the histamine block, and you note your symptoms before you took it, compared to 20 minutes after you took it, and let's say you don't feel any difference. Your headache is still there, your, your ability is still there, your, your sweating, sweatiness is still there. Well, then maybe it's not associated with the microbiome. But if you took the histamine block and you notice, wow, I have less of a headache, or I feel less irritable right now, or I'm less hot, or, um, you, know, you know, those are the main ones, um, you know, or my heart rate uh, went down a little bit. Those are, or my, I, my feelings of anxiousness uh, calmed a little bit. That should tell you that there might be some critters in your digestive system that might be producing more histamine than, um, than it's good for you. And by taking histamine block, you are helping your body process that histamine that's being generated from the bacteria. So that's actually a really good tip that health professionals should also be using um, because lab testing uh, for histamine intolerance is actually fraught with issues. Okay. So bottom line histamine block, take it with food, with a drink. If you're going to a party, um, and you're going to drink some alcohol, great time to take it, um, right before you drink as well. Maybe a couple, if you're going to continue drinking throughout the evening, take it to restaurants. You know, you go to a restaurant, even if it's your favorite restaurant, you're going to be getting, um, exposed to things that you shouldn't have. Um, or you're going to be purposely choosing to eat some things that you shouldn't like last night was my birthday. And, uh, I was like, what the heck? Um, you know, there was some gluten on some amazing calamari at this restaurant in Seattle called Palisades. Phenomenal place if you haven't been and I avoid gluten. I mean, I'm 100% avoidance of that stuff most of the time, <laughs> but last night I cheated. And I turned to my wife, Nadia, and I was like, did you bring histamine block? She goes, I did not. And I was like, damn, I'm still, I'm, I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. And, uh, thankfully it wasn't so bad for me. I, I felt okay. Um, and, um, you know, that's, I didn't have the bread on the table. I just had a little fried calamari, but that's still cheating. Um, but that's when you would use a histamine block. Okay. So histamine block, all it does is it supports this one particular gene right here. That's it. Okay. Now, another product at Seeking Health. So we just discussed histamine block. Let's look at histamine block plus. Here are all the ingredients for histamine block plus. We all, we have DAO right here. Okay. We still have DAO, but it's half the potency. Okay. So we have half the potency of DAO is compared to what's in histamine block plus. Why? Because uh, DAO is actually an uh, incredibly expensive ingredient. It's very expensive. Um, we spend a lot of money on this ingredient, um, but uh, for good reason, because it's really, really effective. But so we have half the amount of DAO in this product, but we have all these other ingredients in here. Why would you want those other ingredients? And when would you take it? And how would you take it? Okay, so histamine block plus in short, histamine block plus, think of it as supporting your entire histamine pathway, the whole thing. So all the genes that I have researched in terms of your body producing histamine, and then the genes that are associated with metabolizing histamine, histamine block plus works with all of these genes. And when I actually looked at my pathway planner, which I'm going to show you back in a second again, when I looked at the histamine metabolism and all the genes that were associated, all the nutrients that were needed for your body to process histamine, I was like, what would happen if I put these nutrients in one capsule and, and provided it to people, if it would help um, process histamine and, and help people reach healthy levels of histamine? And so I tested it for months and, uh, the results were phenomenal. And after testing for months, we then produced it a year later. Now it's available for you all to buy and, uh, to get it. So 
histamine block plus provides the DAO enzyme, which histamine block does as well, but it also provides the zinc and B3, which supports the ALDH gene. It provides SAMe, which supports the HNMT gene. It provides B5, which supports this Na2 gene. It provides riboflavin, vitamin B2, which su supports the MAO-A gene, and the zinc and B3 here as well. It also, you can see this red stuff. This red stuff is toxic, okay, So to your body. So by uh, supporting uh, or providing alpha-ketoglutarate, we're helping your body metabolize uh, ammonia. And by providing PQQ, in, this, in the same formulation, we're helping your body um, get healthier levels of hydrogen peroxide, okay? So these are all the nutrients that are found in histamine block plus. So when would you take histamine block plus? Any time, any time of day, it doesn't matter. Um, in fact, before bed is actually a wonderful time if you're having difficulty falling asleep. So if you're staring at the ceiling and you're struggling with sleep onset, then histamine block plus can support a healthy onset of sleep by helping your body achieve healthier histamine levels. Because if you have too high of histamine, then your brain is, has excit an excitatory compound of histamine, and that is also going to support uh, dopamine and norepinephrine levels as well. It, it works with all these other neurotransmitters, but those aren't useful when you're trying to fall asleep. So by taking histamine block plus before bed, you are going to be calming your brain by reducing the excitatory neurotransmitter histamine. In fact, histamine, I think, is the number one excitatory neurotransmitter in your brain. So taking histamine block plus before bed is phenomenal. Um, but also if you, like last night, I came home from the restaurant. First thing I did after saying hi to our dog and cats, I went right to the supplement drawer and I took two, which is a serving side of histamine block plus, and uh, swallowed it. And uh, usually, I get pretty itchy toes from eating gluten and sweaty and itchy and irritable and difficulty falling asleep. I was good. Now, this doesn't mean you should run out and cheat like I did last night all the time, um, but it's nice to have a tool uh, in your tool shelf to be able to, to process these things, okay? So Histamine Block Plus supports the entire histamine pathway. If you're struggling with, you know, you got pets, and your nose is running and you're doing this with your pets and you wanna pick up your cats and you wanna pet your dog, but you can't, or your kid really wants dogs or cats and you can't have dogs or cats because your kids keeps getting itchy skin or runny noses. Well, histamine block plus may provide that um, ability for your child to have healthier histamine levels, which then the runny noses, the itchy skins, the sneezing, um, the coughing, um, will be supported and then they can have their cat and dog. Um, so that is a great thing. So I used to be getting runny noses from our cat and um, now I don't. And if I do, I just take a couple of histamine block plus and that takes care of it, okay? So histamine block plus take any time of day, any time you're experiencing any histamine symptom. Now, if you are experiencing anaphylaxis, well, that's Benadryl. That's emergency room, that's EpiPen stuff. You know, you handle it by that, okay? So histamine block plus um, is supportive of healthy histamine levels. It is not a replacement for a heavy hitting drug like Benadryl or an EpiPen, okay? So, but itchy skin, runny noses, um, you know, uh, seasonal stuff with grasses and pollens in the air, histamine block plus is a must. Um, for your shelf at home, okay? And that, we're talking about this one right here, histamine block plus, okay? That's what you want. And serving size, again, is two. Um, breastfeeding um, ladies can be taking this. Kids over four years old can be taking this. Um, and you might want to just start with one capsule because the serving size is two capsules, as you can see right here. Um, and during pregnancy, um, I would not be taking this without talking with your doctor first. Histamine block, on the other hand, um, histamine block has been studied, um, not ours, but histamine block, the DAO enzyme has been researched during pregnancy to get healthier histamine levels during pregnancy because higher histamine levels during pregnancy are problematic. But still, you need to talk to with your health professional about this 
Um, so, but you can be taking it for sure during breastfeeding, but do doctors do prescribe histamine block to patients um, with pregnancy, but it's an individual case-by-case -case basis. So talk with your doctor about that. Now, there is another product called histaminics. Now, when would you be taking histaminics? So this is a great question. So this is, you know, I, my team is actually working on a better website. We're going to be having it hopefully in a few more months launched and you'll get a lot more uh, information um, because this is not the best description, um, but my team is working on it and we'll have it better for you. Okay. So if we go to the products comparison chart, let's see what it says here. Who is it for? Um, those who want to support a healthy inflammatory and histamine response to environmental compounds. Okay, good. Um, but let's make it better. Okay. So let's go back to here. So back before I do that, I want to show you what's in histaminics. What is in it? Because this will make sense once you see on the diagram. Okay, we have stinging nettle, luteolin, which is a very, very good antioxidant um, as a flavonoid. Um, it's better than just lutein or, or quercetin. Um, the research is very, very solid on luteolin. Rutin is decent. It's another flavonoid, quercetin, bromelain. Uh, glucorophanin is basically kind of like a glutathione. Um, dihydroquercetin is a, is a very good uh, form of quercetin and it is better absorbed um, than just your typical quercetin and quercetin dihydrate is better than just your typical quercetin as well. Okay. So we've got quercetin, sting nettle, luteolin, um, bromelain. Remember that we go back here. We have curcumin, quercetin, rutin, vitamin C. Okay. And we have quercetin up here as well. And we have quercetin here. Okay. So what are you what are you seeing here so remember as i said in the beginning when you have histamine it's stored inside your cells you don't have a histamine response when you have histamine releasing out of your cells and then it binds to a receptor that's when you start getting histamine symptoms so histaminics if you look here at, you know curcumin uh, urtica is actually um come on ben i just I just just this one just showed it up oh gosh come on don't look dumb i'm gonna look dumb ah i forgot the name see there's too many names stinging nettle ah stinging nettle okay urtica diosha is stinging nettle so we have stinging nettle here we have quercetin and we have rutin all three of these look at this arrow see this purple Purple right here decreases activity. Oh, I'm hiding it with my, I'm going to go full screen. Okay. I'm gone. I'm still here, but I'm gone. Okay. So you can see this purple line. It says decreases activity right down here. And if you go up here, there's that same arrow right here as here and decreases activity. So rutin, quercetin and urtica. Sting nettle, I remembered, supports the, the keeping of histamine inside your cell, i.e. preventing its release. And if you prevent the release of histamine, you are keeping it stored in your mast cells and your neurons and your gastric mucosa, your platelets and your basophils. It's staying there in a happy place. If you release it, well, that released histamine is now going to bind to your histamine receptors right here. And if you bind to those histamine receptors, then what's going to happen? You're going to start getting histamine symptoms. So keep the histamine stored inside your cell, keep it happy, and, and you don't want it to be releasing all the time. So histaminics is one of those foundational products that will support the healthy storage of histamine inside your cells instead of being released. So the, the histamine will be floating around your blood and binding to the receptors. So while histamine block helps metabolize histamine in your gut from food, drink, and the microbiome, and histamine block plus helps metabolize histamine um, all throughout your body um, for any reason, for the most part, 
that's breaking histamine down. It's metabolizing it and helping you pee it out. So when you metabolize histamine, look here. See here? You literally pee it out, okay? It goes in your urine. You're converting histamine and you're peeing it out. So when you take histamine block, you're peeing it out histamine. When you're taking histamine block plus, you're peeing out histamine. When you're taking histaminics, you are, you're providing these flavonoids from these herbs and these other compounds which keep the histamine safely stored in the cells, preventing it from being released. So it's two different actions completely. So would you want to be taking histaminics in conjunction with histamine block or histamine block plus? Yes, if you are noticing that you are not getting as much relief as you need to, then combining histaminics with both of these, um, with either of these, that can be useful. Um, now, if you were to buy one, just one of these, which one would it be? Well, it depends. So, you know, you would get, um, let's go back to here. If you are struggling only when you're eating foods, so if you're only having histamine associated symptoms when you're eating or drinking, then I would be selecting histamine block. Okay. Now, if you are struggling with other types of histamine symptoms, such as a runny nose, um, maybe you've got some congestion, maybe you've got some headaches, uh, maybe you've got some itchy skin, um, maybe you're cranky or you're having you know, difficulty falling asleep at night, um, you know, that's when you would be looking at histamine block plus. If you are having both of these different, thing, these different things happening at different times of day, or maybe one day of the week you're having histamine associated symptoms to foods or drinks, or maybe you drink alcohol once a week or twice a week, and you want to, you know, have a glass of red wine, which is very high histamine, by the way, and you always have issues from drinking red wine, but you want to have red wine, but you're struggling, well, then you would get histamine block and you would get histamine block plus, and you would use them when you're having those associated symptoms. You don't have to take supplements every day. You take them when you need to, okay? You take them when you need to. Histaminics helps keep histamine safely stored uh, in the various uh, histamine storage cells in your body. And this is a type of supplement that if you are, you know, depending on the season, wow, sun just came out. Depending on the season, you would want to be taking histaminics daily, daily. This is not a type of supplement that you would take when you need to like histamine block or histamine block plus. This, you want to keep the, the flavonoids work best when you take them daily. So histaminics would become a daily supplement. Can you take them, these supplements at the same time? Yes, you can. Um, do they conflict with each other? No, they don't. Um, so I would be looking at uh, histaminics in conjunction with these other types of um, histamine block or histamine block plus. So having said that, there are some other um, associated supplements associated with supporting histamine, but I'm going to be looking at your questions here now. Um, so that was that helpful, I hope. Um, Dr. Lynch, you've heard that quercetin can slow down comp T and affect estrogen detox. Is that real? Um, the amount of quercetin that you would need to take in order to slow down COMT would be in quite enormous. It is true that quercetin does, um, uh, quercetin does affect COMT. Why? Because quercetin is a catechol, and COMT is a gene that stands for catechol O methyltransferase. So, quercetin, since it's a catechol, it needs to be metabolized by COMT in order to be eliminated from the body. Um, so, it, it does slow it down. Um, but again, you'd have to have a lot of quercetin for that to happen. So, what I would urge anyone to do when you're taking quercetin, if you're taking a lot of quercetin, and you've been using its success for maybe your seasonal allergies or what have you, and your moods are fine, great. Now, if you've been taking a lot of quercetin and you want to have now even more, and now you're starting to get PMS or you're going to be starting to get cranky and irritable and difficulty falling asleep, maybe you are actually slowing your CMT down a little bit. 
um, and you need to back off the quercetin maybe and try a more synergistic product uh, like histaminics since it doesn't just have the quercetin it's got these other um, ingredients in it as well um, you know so you don't need to load up on so much quercetin you can you know if you have bromelain and dihydroquercetin and luteolin and stinging nettle um, you don't have to just load up on one ingredient and then you're going to get less of a backlash good i'm glad it's helpful um, yes histamine is plentiful in fermented foods definitely um Oh, great point, intrinsic factor. Yes, antihistamines block uh, the stomach-related H1 receptors, prevent motion, sick, uh, motion sickness and seasickness. All right, I'm going to show you something that uh, Ceylon actually pointed out to me. Ceylon's in the team in the product specialist department. So this is my histamine-related pathway, okay? You see this gene right here? Oh, i got to share my screen. You see this gene right here? Okay. HRH1, it's orange. What's orange mean? Orange means it's fast. So it means it's, zoom in here a bit more. So if this gene is faster, it means it's more sensitive. So my HRH1 gene is more sensitive than other people see this orange it's faster so if i click this it takes me to the particular gene and it says here the hrh1 gene expresses receptor for histamine it causes smooth muscle contraction increased capillary permeability release of catecholamines and neurotransmission okay and we've improved this description since um but it's uh this is this is my variation so i'm heterozygous it is thought to be a true functional variant affecting receptor density in an adverse way that may increase allergy risk story of my life okay so when i actually did my strategy and i found this hrh one i was like god that makes so much sense i was actually relieved to know that i had this thing because it answered so many questions for me. And then when Ceylon told me that, oh, HRH1 is also associated with motion sickness and seasickness and car sickness, um, or you're going to the merry-go-round. Remember as a kid getting a merry-go-round? I was struggling. I was always that kid. I was like, man, get me off this thing. And meanwhile, all my other friends are just zipping around that thing just fine. Me, I couldn't do it. Um, I couldn't do it. I bet you ballerinas. Uh, none of them have this HRH1 gene. Um, that'd be interesting to see. Or ice skaters um, would be curious because I am very susceptible to seasickness. Seasickness, listen to this. If seasickness is associated with higher levels of histamine and you take a antihistamine and then seasickness seasick goes away or diminishes, what's the number one drug for seasickness? Dramamine. Histamine? Dramamine. But what does Dramamine do? All Dramamine does is block histamine from binding to the histamine receptor. That's it. Dramamine does not metabolize your histamine levels. So I now live on a lake, okay? I'm in a boat all the time and I can't afford to be seasick. And so I keep my histamine levels in check by using Histamine Block Plus and I rarely have to use histaminics. In fact, I hardly ever use histaminics because the histamine block plus for me is enough. And I only take it periodically. So if I'm going to go on a, an excursion on a boat or if it's rough water, then, it, you know, I'll be taking probably two histamine block plus um, before going out. Um, when, I, when my wife drives the car, and I'm on my phone answering Instagram DMs, which happens a lot these days. Um, that's why I'm answering a lot of them when my wife is driving. Um, I can't answer them on windy roads. I just, I can't. But if we're on a straightaway, I'm good. So if you have this HRH1 gene, it makes you more uh, seasickness, um, seasick, car sick, motion sickness. And if you have a kid that's associated with those symptoms as, as well, I would be seriously looking at histamine block plus uh, for them 
So that could be a game changer for them. And again, that is this one um, right here. Okay, so histamine block plus to support healthy histamine levels. If you have healthier histamine levels, then sea sickness and motion sickness um, should be improved. Uh, would you suggest using histamine block instead of uh, mucinex when you have a runny nose? Um, great question. Um, so I would be looking at uh, this one. I'd be looking at histamine block plus. So when I was sick um, a couple weeks ago or maybe even a month ago now, I don't remember, my had a runny nose that just would not stop. And I was curious. I just kept blowing the, the, my nose constantly. I was like, okay, um, I'm going to experiment here. I don't know if it would work, but I knew a runny nose associated with high levels of histamine. I took two histamine block plus and I didn't really think about it. You know, when stuff, something goes away or the pain goes away, you don't even acknowledge it until it comes back. So that's what happened the first time. And then I realized, you know, a couple hours went by, I wasn't sniffing and I wasn't blowing my nose, but then it started again. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I went back. So this was right in the midst of having, um, you know, a viral infection and my, and my nose was just running like crazy. So I said, what the hell? I'm going to take two more. I took two more. Now I'm, I'm really tuned in. My runny nose stopped within about five minutes and it's, it worked for about two to three hours. And then it started running again. I was like, screw it. I'm going to take two more. Stopped. And so I was wondering, am I doing myself a disservice by, by metabolizing histamine or am I actually making it better for myself? Well, symptomatically I was doing better and I didn't, didn't see my, like my infection lasted longer. So it wasn't like I took a Tylenol for my, my fever to go away. So that's what I was wondering if I'm making my, my mucus go away by metabolizing the higher histamine and supporting healthy histamine levels by taking histamine block plus, am I going to be making the infection last longer? I didn't, my, my immune system still worked just fine. So I would be looking at histamine block plus, uh, for supporting healthy uh, histamine levels that are associated with, uh, runny noses if they're too high. Uh, herpes outbreak related to histamine tolerance. I don't know. Not sure. I would think more that uh, uh, a herpes outbreak would be more associated with stress, um, physical stress, emotional stress. And histamine can be associated with both of those. But remember at the be very beginning of this, I said we have to be mindful that we can't blame everything on histamine. We have to zoom back sometimes and look at the underlying factors. And I'm going to show you something again here, what I mean by underlying factors. And when I say underlying factors, this is what I mean. So here's histamine. This is a common amino acid that is found in protein. Okay. When you eat protein, maybe you're on the carnivore diet or what have you. Okay. Look, so histidine converts to histamine. So this is how your body makes histamine. So making histamine is done by this gene, histamine decarboxylase by using vitamin B6. In order to convert histidine to histamine, you need vitamin B6 and you need this enzyme working. But if this enzyme works too fast, see orange speeds up the gene. See this increase activity down here? So increase activity, this orange. So I'm increasing the activity of this gene. So orange increases the activity of this gene. So now I'm converting more histamine into making more histamine. So histidine makes histamine. And what does that? Lack of sleep, acute high stress, infections, inflammation. Here's another infection, hydrogen peroxide, which is due to low glutathione levels, exercise. Okay. So all these things contribute to making more histamine. So if you are wondering, okay, I'm exercising really hard and now I'm getting a runny nose or I'm getting a, a big red uh, face that doesn't go away from exercise or I'm getting exercise uh, induced asthma, um, which is actually associated with higher levels of histamine, by the way. So if you're exercising and you have a really dark red face, 
And people are like, what the hell, man? Why do you have such a, a red face? What's going on with you? Um, and it stays red for a long time. That's high histamine. And if your heart rate goes, uh, when you're exercising, is really easy to um, go up, that could be also histamine. So I'm very high histamine. Um, I sweat profusely when I exercise. My heart rate goes up. Um, I can get a red face and I can get ringing in my ears. Ringing in your ears is another high histamine symptom. Um, so I just worked out yesterday and I actually start getting a ringing in my ear yesterday. Um, and it happens typically at the end of workout. But these are the things which can increase your uh, histamine production. Another thing that does that is progesterone, ladies. Progesterone increases the conversion of histidine to histamine. Okay. Couple other questions and I gotta go. Um, Allison, uh, what would you recommend for histamine overload intolerance from a viral infection seven months ago causing symptoms? Uh, Switch to a low histamine diet and it's helped a lot. Um, so your, your histamine related symptoms were uh, lightheadedness, dizziness, uh, palpitations, rashes. Um, so I am seeing uh, a lot of so this um, existing viral infection is causing a lot of histamine overload in people. Why? Because your immune system, your immune system, viral infections increase the conversion of histidine to histamine. Okay? And not only that, Infections, inflammation, increase the release of histamine, okay? And uh, let's another, see another one. All right, let's just leave it at that, okay? So infections, viral infections, inflammation, low glutathione, lack of sleep, acute high stress, um, increase the production of histamine, and the release of histamine. So is it any wonder that so many people are struggling with high histamine now after this viral infection? Absolutely not. Now it's also happening in children. Kids are also having higher histamine symptoms from this. Now you you can say, okay, well, which histamine intolerance supplement would be supportive um, for me? Well, first thought would be histamine block plus, And I would say you'd be right. Um, Histamine block plus would be a, a great first choice to support healthy histamine levels. Um, but I also want you to learn to step back a little bit. So I would definitely say grab a histamine block plus, but I would also say, let's think about this a little bit more. Okay. Hydrogen peroxide, high levels of hydrogen peroxide also increase histamine production. Now, what eliminates hydrogen peroxide. Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, come on, stop it. Glutathione, right here. Glutathione. Here is hydrogen peroxide, right here, okay? Oh, I'm covering it again. Here's hydrogen peroxide. See this? Glutathione comes over using this particular gene, glutathione peroxidase 4 and 1, converts hydrogen peroxide into water. When you have any type of infection, viral or otherwise, then you are generating a lot of hydrogen peroxide in order to support your immune system to overcome an infection. And then you're using a lot of glutathione to then take that hydrogen peroxide, which was supporting your immune system, but it's not supportive of your body and you have to, your body has to convert that to water. Okay. So your body converts it into water by glutathione. But if you keep going and you've been sick for a while, you know, or you've been overtraining, then your glutathione levels are low. And if your glutathione levels are low, you have higher hydrogen peroxide, then you'd be making higher levels of histamine. Okay. So then you should be saying, 
Well, should I be supporting my glutathione levels? 100%. So the next thing I would be reaching for is I don't, let's see if we have glutathione in the histamine intolerance supplements category. That would be very smart if we did, but we don't. No, because this category would actually be very huge um, if we, you know, included everything because it could be um, anxiousness related. It could be sleep related. It could be exercise related. Um, so it's not in here, but we do have a whole category for glutathione and I'll discuss the differences for glutathione, but I would be looking at, so if you've been struggling with higher histamine symptoms, um, post this viral infection, I'd be looking at glutathione and the histamine block plus, and possibly the PQQ. If you don't tolerate the glutathione, I'd be looking at the PQQ, um, instead. Can high histamine cause hair loss? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I would say indirectly, um, because high histamine requires folate to process and metabolize and get rid of your, out of your body. Can methylfolate help with processing better? Um, well, let's go back to the pathway. Can methylfolate process histamine better? Okay, here's Sam E. Okay. Sam E, Sam, is made from uh, methylfolate and methylcobalamin and an amino acid called methionine. So in short, methylfolate can help process histamine. Yes, but the better answer is if you look at any of the genes on this pathway, you're not going to see methylfolate anywhere. These are the cofactors. See that right here in green? I need to disappear again. So here are the cofactors, right? Cofactors are the vitamins and minerals that enzymes have to have in order to function. If you do not have a cofactor for an enzyme, that enzyme is not going to function, period. So genes make enzymes and enzymes require cofactors in order to function. This particular gene, HNMT, makes an enzyme called HNMT, and it must have SAMe in order to function. SAMe is made from uh, methionine or homocysteine, um, methylfolate, and methylcobalamin. But you are not seeing methylfolate anywhere on this histamine pathway, anywhere. In order to make SAMe from methylfolate, whew, that's a lot of work. Okay, that's a lot of work. So here's your methylfolate. Okay, here's your methylcobalamin. Here's your homocysteine. And you need to convert this homocysteine along with your methylcobalamin, along with your methylfolate, to convert it into methionine. Then you need sufficient magnesium, which a lot of people don't have. You need sufficient potassium, which 99% of women don't have and 90% of men don't have for this enzyme to function to convert methionine into SAM. So long answer to say, no, you cannot just assume that taking methylfolate will process your histamine. That is incorrect. And look what slows the, your enzyme from making SAMe, inflammation and infections and hydrogen peroxide once again. So. That's the beautiful thing when you understand biochemistry and you know your genes. So me, I have a reduced ability to uh, transport methylcobalamin. I have a reduced ability to use methylfolate and I have a reduced ability to recycle my cobalamin. So my methylation cycle is pretty crap. Okay. Um, so I need to be supporting my histamine pathway directly with SAMe, but I can't just take SAMe. I also need my vitamin B2. If I just take SAMe, look what happens. If I just take SAMe, my body will convert the histamine, which is great, into menmethylhistamine. That's step one, okay? That's step one. 
but N-methylhistamine, you see this feedback inhibition, this purple? Purple slows the genes down again. Remember this decreasing activity down here? I need to move myself. So this decreases activity right here. Purple slows the enzyme down. So N-methylhistamine slows HNMT gene down. So if I take SAMe to process my histamine, because if you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to take SAMe to lower my histamine because I'm an undermethylator, which you hear all the time. Like if you're an undermethylator, you have higher histamine. I'm going to be talking, that's a whole separate video. That's nonsense. It's true in a sense, but it's not complete. If you just take SAMe, you're making N-methylhistamine. If you don't have sufficient riboflavin, you're building it up, you're increasing your histamine. And then if you take your riboflavin, you can still be increasing this compound, which is toxic. And again, this can slow down your HNMT, increase histamine if you're deficient in zinc and niacin. And what is everybody else deficient in right now because of this viral infection? You named it zinc. Okay. So a lot of people are struggling with high histamine symptoms because of this infection um, that is going around everywhere because um, it's using a lot of your folate, it's using a lot of your zinc, and it's using up a lot of your glutathione. Um, so supporting it with histamine block plus, um, the immediate symptoms uh, is great, but you're also going to be needing to dive into this glutathione as well. Okay. Do I sell these maps? Um, uh, you can get your map by going here, strategy. Sold out? No way. Wow. All right. That's a shocker. Um, so we're sold out temporarily. I know that for a fact. Um, so I think it's because we're waiting on some more kits. We have some kits coming soon. Um, I'm surprised we're sold out. That's a bummer. Um, but come back later, um, and check when we get this in. And, um, then when you get it in and you get your strategy, in, you're going to be getting your same exact, uh, report as what I'm looking at and sharing with you right now. You're going to be getting all this plus your own unique, um, pathway. So this is my histamine pathway. This is my wife's histamine pathway. See how it's different. Her DAO and ALDH are slow here and over here. And we've got this other individual here. I'm going to look at she's slow here, 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 and here. And she struggled with histamine symptoms her whole life. And she had migraines all the time. So she opened up her histamine pathway and her estrogen um, pathway and her dopamine pathway. I mean, look at here. Her dopamine pathway is just also clogged. So when she learned about this and she was able to uh, make strategic uh, decisions, um, you're looking at this right now and it's Greek, um, but we have a list of health practitioners that can help you. But uh, man, I'll tell you what, this is, this is like having Pandora's box open up for you and you can figure stuff out. So I hope this serves you well. Um, I want to be doing this more for you all. And uh, I, I want to be trying to keep them concise, um, but it's also hard to do that because um, it's so much information, but do comment below if you like this and uh, give me a thumbs up as well. That helps the metrics because I'm heavily shadow banned right now on uh, YouTube, um, which you may have noticed. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the little bell notification and hit it to be on. So next time I'm live, you can be notified. And if you don't want to be bugged at that time, that's fine. You just ignore it and, and uh, you'll find the recording there later. Um, but uh I'm excited to be doing these more for you. I'm going to be going over the pregnancy, prenatal vitamins uh, soon. I'm going to be talking with my team about what videos they want me to, to produce more. But please click the subscribe button, hit the like, thumbs up, and um, share this with friends and family. A lot of people are struggling with histamine intolerance right now, needlessly. And uh, it can be really, really supportive. I'm living proof. Um, grab this book, uh, Dirty Genes, as well. And um, hope that serves you. Until next time, take care.